So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what I have here today, so I'll do a two special episode here at Kia Isiana. So I'd like to thank everyone here and to Sir Patrick and to Sir Alan for making this all possible. Finally, I got the 2024 Kia Grand Carnival on my channel and this is the SX top of the line variant. I'm a bit late already to the party with this review but still I will do it anyways. Being now the new Grand Carnival, you get the common tiger nose grill now like with all Kias and to know this is the 2024 model you get the brand new Kia badge over here and going back to this tiger nose grill you have a lot of silver trim and chrome slots over here it gives it a nice character uh, at least and you get led lights all around including your fog lamps compared to only with the previous grand carnival you have much much shorter overhangs than usual unlike with some uh, modern cars nowadays you don't have any more uh, cladding all around the vehicle. I mean, there's none of above here on the wheel arches, but it's present here on the side profile. But at least it's only kept to a minimal. You have 19 inch wheels wrapped with continental tires. Pairing this Grand Carnival. So, being a new platform too, this too is shared with the uh, Sportage, the Sorento. I also have a review of that. Check that out on my channel. So, I uh, expect for this to drive like a crossover rather than a long MPV. Unlike its uh, twin sister, I must say. So pairing this Grand Carnival is a 2.2 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 202 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque. And like again with its twin sister, this is mated to an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. However though, I've seen a lot of reviews now. Well, it's almost been two years now since a lot of people have driven this Grand Carnival along too with the uh, twin sister of this, aka the Hyundai Star Staria or Staria if you're a Filipino. Uh, yeah, this one drives a little bit better than usual. I'll give my verdict on that once I get to test drive this. So here on the side profile of this Grand Carnival, you get LED repeaters and the side mirrors itself are mounted on the door. So that means less uh, wind noise going into the cabin. And I like there's a two-tone effect over here too. And comparing only from the ones I've watched almost two years ago now, this one is no longer blacked out. Uh, let me know in the comments down below because this is literally my first time going uh, near one of these. But it's only present here on the A pillar but not on the... C pillar, this one is purely chromed out. You get electronic sliding doors on each side. And specialty of course of this Grand Carnival, SX mind you, uh, this being the top of the line, you get captain seats all around. This is not even my diving position yet, but anyway, feet room, knee room is excellent and two, my headroom, just alright for me, I'm 5'4". Weirdly, there's a lot of controls uh, buttons here. Some are old school, some are actually pretty functional like here. You can open and close the door here with the handle, like per usual MPV. But you can do it here too on the beeper, there's a button here. And you have an anti-pinch feature, which acts really really quickly. And I like the anti-pinch feature is really quick and the door goes all the way back uh, to, to open of course. And there are buttons here too for your seat ventilation and your heating function along too with your window switch. And then there's your child lock over here. Okay, have not seen that in a van. I mean personally because I don't check that part. Even though you have electronic adjustments here in for the second row, you can do it as well manually here. But there you go. The Which gives this Grand Carnival a unique uh, take because you can either fold them electronically adjust them manually too. I, I kind of like that. Gives it a little bit more uh, accessibility and ergonomics too. Unlike with some MPV uh, vehicles. So here in the middle, you have two cup holders, uh, space for your phone, a 12 volt socket, and way further down below, you have a bigger cubby space. And then above here, you have your LED lights, air conditioning vents, and exclusively on the right side, you get your air conditioning controls. It's kind of like it's twin sister. It's only one side, but I wish it was present on either side. And unique too, for this MPV, you get a double sunroof. So you get a bigger one here for the second and third compared to the ones in front. Alright, so I'll go back here in the in, uh, interior I'll, when I show you the uh, third row. So here now in the rear of this Kia Grand Carnival, well, I'll be honest, compared with its twin, it is, just looks a little bit more plain, but at least you have one long LED light bar, again, the updated Kia badge, and one of my biggest nitpicks with this Grand Carnival, I'll just be honest, bottom uh, signal lights, shout out to my friend Orbs, yes, 
you and I hate this so much, it is completely understandable. But it makes up for it though, is the space. So you have an electronic tailgate too. And with all of the seats up alone, you have a total of 627 liters, which is pretty good. And unlike its twin yet again, whoops, well, let me fold you down. You have a tool case over here, separate tool case rather, because usually most cars now are underneath here or just one side. But this one, it folds inwards, which is pretty unique. And folding down this uh, third row is just a little bit more complicated. But once you uh, own this car already, it's going to be pretty easy. So it's kind of like a two-step motion. So you have to pull this both at the same time. It's a little bit heavy only, but you get there eventually and pull this back up it's as well a two-step motion you have to do that first and there you go and few toys here in the back grocery hooks steadying hooks and a 12 volt socket solely here on the right side so that's about it here with the exterior and a bit of the second row too and the boot of this grand carnival let's check out the front row So this is the interior front row of the Kia Grand Carnival. Here in the door card, you have a lot of squeegee material. It's a two-tone, so you have squeegee material up above here and then white leather around here in the window switches. Yeah, interior visually overall looks really good. However, though, there's just a lot more gloss black than usual. That's why everything's covered up with this white vinyl. Anyways, at least it looks good for me at least. So here in the steering wheel, it's your usual key. You have your buttons here for your volume and phone connectivity. And on the right side, adjustments for the instrument cluster and adaptive cruise control. Very good with that key. Above here too, just open it. You have a sunroof here exclusive for the front row. Here on the left side of the dashboard, one blank button only, but the rest are for your electronic stability control and departure warning. Other controls for the sliding doors, you can as well turn them off, along too with your electronic tailgate, and that's your fuse box, don't open that. And being the SX, just one nitpick again of mine, uh, since this now being a 2024 model, I wish the instrument cluster was all digital, but it's still the classic font of uh, Kia, which I am a big fan of. And there's some numerous adjustments you can do in the middle with your little digital display in the middle. And then here in your infotainment system, again, it's your usual Kia. You have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and sadly, you only have a reverse camera. So, so quality, but hey, at least there still is for, I mean, again, for uh, the size of this vehicle. And to... Uh, being the all new Grand Carnival, this is 30 millimeters longer in wheelbase and 40 millimeters longer in length overall. So I want to see if this would be very much easy to drive. I mean, I've never driven the older Grand Carnivals, but maybe one soon. So stay tuned for that. So below the infotainment system, you have your air conditioning controls with numerous adjustments yet again. Further down, you have three USB ports, a cubby space and a wireless charging pad. Then glove box, okay, pretty good as well too. You have a light inside. Around in the gear shift, a lot of gloss back materials yet again. And then you have for your driving modes, electronic parking brake, auto hold. And on the right side, you have cup holders and a cubby space, which actually fits my phone perfectly. And then further back, you have chrome buttons for your parking sensors, reverse camera. And I love this feature. You have heat and ventilated for the front seats. <laughs> I already tried this while I'm doing my bills. It kept my bum really, really cool. And then here, center console box. Open this up. Very big amount of space as well. You have a front copy space too. And then seats overall. One, two, three rows or all leather. Okay, a little bit more on the durable side of things. But again, at least it's still comfortable. You have, I don't think you have, oh, you have lumbar adjustments here. Oh, for the driver seat. Then for the front, oh no sadly, none for the right front passenger seat but again, it's all electronically adjustments at least. Above here, you have buttons for your lights, your sunroof, and then visor, you have a big vanity mirror with a halogen light. The star here passed, what I remember. So that's about here in front of this all new Grand Carnival. Okay, let's go straight to the uh, third row since I already did a walkthrough of the second row. So here now in the third row of this Grand Carnival. Yeah, just as comfortable as any of the seats here in the cabin. And surprisingly space here 
throughout is all XN. Even for the third room, feet room, just all right if you just stretch out only. Knee room, good uh, headroom, just all right again for small adults and kids here in the back. And few toys only here in the third row. You get cubby spaces, a cup holder on either side, along too with USB ports. And what I really love with this Grand Carnival, yes, you have sun shades for the second row. They're really huge too. And I like they did not leave out for the third row too because you have very small sun shade covers here too. That is my favorite feature definitely of this uh, Grand Carnival. And then if I sit here in the middle, yeah, you can fit uh, three people here easily. I don't think you can fit an emergency person right in the middle because it's all hampered by the buttons again in the uh, second row. So yeah, that's pretty much it here in the interior of this all your Grand Carnival. Finally, let's go for a dive. And finally, after years of wanting to dive one of these, finally I got it on my channel along too with another car. I already teased it so stay tuned and first impressions immediately. Uh, I understand now why people say this drives like a crossover because it definitely is. This car is way, way longer than usual. But, but driving this is pretty much easy. And from eco, normal, and then sport, and then smart mode, yeah, it's pretty much very easy. Even though sport mode has a lot of weight now to it, but it's still very much easy to drive. So. Let's go straight to sport mode. Eco, there's a bit of a delay with the 8-speed transmission. It's exactly the same uh, driving characteristics with its twin. And mind you too, there are no paddle shifters for this. But at least you have manual mode here, plus minus two. And visibility all on the vehicle. Yeah, this is a very, very long term. No doubt about it. However, you get big mirrors, big windows. Yes, the uh, second may tend to block your visibility, but the reverse camera will be there in handy anyways. And I love to the rear visibility. You have a big window, so you can see uh, throughout clearly in the uh, rear. And again, this still has a reverse camera. I need pick maybe uh, it would have been nice if there was a uh, 360 degree camera, but then again, at least the, you have a reverse camera alone. I did find the auto just a little bit jerky but again it's uh not so bad and then here's sport mode there's floyd Ooh. okay right what i can give uh with the diving impressions of this comparing only with the hyundai uh, staria yes i did say this dives uh, like a crossover. I am very impressed with this. Yes, the Staria I did find it's a little bit what? Uh, I mean it drives like a normal van. This one Yeah, it drives like a conventional crossover. I'm very impressed with this. So I understand people uh, Praise this vehicle more than the Staria. Of course the Staria mind you looks way better, but this one Yeah I think this is the one to go for. I see why too, this was a very better highway cruiser and this is way, way uh, shorter in height compared with the, again, the Hyundai Staria. Oh wow, this is such a such a nice thing to drive. I mean, I'm just driving it here around in uh, Manila Bay and I've driven a lot of Starias too. I did find that a little bit more wallowy than usual again because of the height of, of it. This one having a lower, well, not like sports car level height, but having a lower uh, height compared with some of the MPVs in this class too. Yeah, this one's a little bit more agile to drive, to, not to my surprise too. Then overtaking is actually surprisingly pretty easy. You have 201 horsepower on the top, and of course, being in uh, sport mode, the transmission is a little bit better than I mean to respond. And then here's smart mode with a little bit of the remote. Oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, eco will be the most sluggish mode, however, it's still not so bad. And yeah, this is so much better. NVH though. More or less the same, but I think on this one's just a little bit better. Maybe it's just down to the what, the tires of this, since these are running on Continentals. And here, let's work. Oh. Yeah, having Continental tires too, not much tire noise translating into the cabin. The NVH of this, well, 
I mean, there's no suspension tons here and there. This NVH of this Grand Carnival is really, really good. And again, I will keep saying it, the diving dynamics, actually even the u turn I think it's just a little bit tighter than the Staria. Yeah, this one drives like a very good sporty crossover. And here just the fuel economy just driving here around in uh, Manila Bay. Well, I, this is not a fair figure, but uh, just a short test drive. But it's still return decent number. So we're doing like 7.2 kilometers per liter. Again, it's pretty much similar like with the uh, Staria. Like here just behind the Namoa concert grounds. You can get be way better numbers than what I'm doing now, hands down. And just driving it here sensibly, like 60, 70 kilometers per hour. That's so comfortable. The suspension is actually not too stiff, not too soft. It's just the what the right amount, and yes, it's, it's gonna be a very comfortable experience whether you're in the first, second, or third row. Such an honor that I've driven the Grand Carnival, and yeah, for the cost of all of this. So the white one I featured in the showroom cost three million ninety-eight thousand pesos, but for this special blue one, this one is three million eighty-eight thousand pesos. Yeah, from almost two years ago now. The price has gone a little bit steeper than usual but make no mistake I think this is still worth your money because it's got the tech it's got the comfort and everything else got the space to the practicality and to the performance so yeah that concludes my review of this uh, Kia Grand Carnival so I'd like to thank everyone here again at Kia Siana to Sir Alan and to Sir Patrick for making this all possible. Remember, there will be more Kia reviews coming here at Kia Siena, so stay tuned for that. So, hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you with more Kia reviews coming right up. Bye-bye.